Should I just start? Hello and welcome to my talk about Git Forge investigation. And I have just realized that it can have a subtitle too. <laughs> <laughs> so it can have a subtitle too. My name is Tomasz, and I even copied twice my information there. That happens sometimes when you have. <laughs> so, Git Forge, what? What, 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 what is that? So, just basically, let's, let's just define the term itself. So, what are the expectations from Git Forge that we have? It's just having <coughs> project hosting uh, as a general project hosting, meaning you can. Uh, host your issue trackers, you can host your deliverables, you can host whatever you want, some, document <coughs> some documentation maybe. You are able to host your Git repositories. I'm sorry. So you are able to host your Git repositories for your source code, source code some artifacts and deliverables, as I mentioned, and ideally it should have runners or actions as you know them from GitHub or any other, any other, issue, any other tools that you're using that allows you to integrate with CI tools, CD tools, or anything else. So th that's what Git4j is. And the first question might be like, but why? Why do we need to change anything? Everything is working, right? You can, you can build your packages, you, you, you have your Git repository hosting, it just, it just works. So, why? Well, because council asked for it, <laughs> right? <laughs> but that's not the real reason. The real reason behind it is that basically what we are going to replace. We are trying to replace this Git and Gitforge, and this, this thing is basically two separated projects right now, which is Pagur, that's the Git hosting, that's our issue tracker for some things, <clears throat> and for projects and for code, and then we have Bugzilla which is issue tracker for packaging and for packages mostly. There are some other things happening in Bugzilla, but 90% of stuff that happens there federal-wise is basically packages. And uh, wh why do we need to change them? So if you look at Bugzilla, for example, it was first released a long time ago. <laughs> as it happens, at that time there were no dedicated issue trackers as we know them is no longer actively developed and Red Hat is moving away, right? Red Hat has moved away all, all the development that Red Hat is doing for the latest real releases out of Bugzilla and only some, some of the older ones are basically there, st still active. And one, one day Red Hat will decide that they will no longer host, host the Bugzilla infrastructure for us, so it's a good idea to look into opportunities how to replace it. And same goes for Pagir. <coughs> Pagir is with us from the year 2015, and we kind of abandoned it. We can see that by the release cadence that was happening in Pagur. For the first years, we got around 10 releases per year, and in the last three years, we got to one per year. You could say that it might mean that the project is stable enough that we don't need the releases, but then when you open the issue tracker and you see almost 500 issues, that we abandon on it, kind of. So that, that's the main reason why we, why we need to move. Uh, if you have been on uh, Matt's talk this, this morning, he had a very nice Venn diagram of things that we would like to have and we have and we don't have. So refer to that if you, uh, if you think that we don't need it. And how, how are we going to replace this? Like, it's a, it's a huge effort. It's a, a lot of, a lot, basically any part of Fedora project is somehow vested in it. We have all, all, all parts of Fedora have at least the Git repository for documentation or for issue tracking or for something. So we are, we are currently gathering resources. So we are gathering requirements in the form of user stories. If you have any user stories that you would like, you are missing from the current uh, current implementation that we have. There is an issue tracker for it. You can submit your issue in the form of user story you would like to see. And we will, we will go through them, process them, group them, and try to test them. So another way how you can participate in, in the investigation is to go and be part of the discussions. So the discussion topic was kind of quiet for some time, and we are running Two, pool, two pools in the, in the 
in the feed. So if you are interested in joining us, please go visit the, visit the discussion, answer the two questions. Like if you are willing to join us in face-to-face -face meetings, virtually pick a, pick a day, pick a time, and we'll try to manage it and sync together to talk about stuff that we are doing and we need to do. <clears throat> so once we gathered, we, we gathered some, we're still missing a bunch of them because of reasons. <laughs> and we're currently working on getting all of them in the upcoming weeks. So once we have all the requirements from all the interested parties in Fedora, we'll go through, through the processing of them. We are currently processing some of the some of the user stories because as it happens, people will post user stories that are obvious, that are part of the default, de default implementation. So we need to just process them a little bit and get rid of some. And basically we decided to categorize them in three groups. That's the, that's the packaging part of it, which means you as a package maintainer and all the workflow you as a package maintainer do. The, the other group are QA tasks. So all, all the stuff that QA is doing, mostly with the packages, but it's separated because QA is not a package maintainer, right? It, they do different things with the packages than, than a maintainer does. And the third one is release engineering. That means, again, it's tied to packages, but again, a little bit different view of the packages and that's composing the whole release from all the artifacts that we have there. And with, with this, we would like to go through them and test all of the all of the issues on the proposed solutions. Oh, <laughs> so when is this happening? It's happening right now. So if you are interested in seeing what the proposed solutions are, we got two. We got <coughs> we got GitLab Community Edition and we got for Geo Community. We got for Geo. Both of those are currently deployed in CommonShift cluster. If you have a FES account, you can register there and try to play with it. Yeah, all the registrations need to be approved by admins, which are people from CPE. And please be aware, these are testing instances. The moment we see something bad happening there, we'll just wipe all the data from it. So, uh, and once the investigation is done, we'll also wipe all the data from it. So it's just for ju just playground for engineers and developers to try it out, test it out, see if you miss something or if you see some feature that you really, really want to have. And all that feedback will be helpful for us. You can, you can leave it in the discussions, you can leave it on the mailing list, you can even leave it in channels and metrics. We, we, have one, we have one there for all the ARC investigations that we are currently doing. And so when? Other than now, which is now you can test it, you can play with the deployments we did, we plan to submit uh, the fin finalized investigation to council with the release of Fedora 41, which is in a couple of weeks, months, weeks or month. So we, we have a little bit of time to finish all the, all the investigation that we want to. Is it doable? I think so. The question is if we will have comprehensive comparison by that time. But I really hope we do because we are in a state where we have basically gathered almost all of the requirements except for the biggest group and that is QA, which we are going to do tomorrow. So <laughs> we'll, we will have all of it soon. And we want to, we would like to, once the investigation is done, we aim with Fedora 42 to create a change proposal to deploy one of the solutions into our infrastructure and see if we can start moving some, moving some workflows there, see what we can do with it, or maybe we will find out that it's not working at all. Who knows? <laughs> but that's, the, that, that's basically the target date. Uh, can you show the slide with the links for a moment? Yep. Here you go. Yeah, there's a ticket with it, yeah. In the flop 2024, the Lenovo one? Oh, great. Is the GitLab one hooked up fast? Sorry? Is the GitLab one hooked up fast? Yes. That doesn't seem to work. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the GitLab one 
is and the forger, or the forger is one is and one is not. But both of them uh, will require admin, one, someone with the admin access to approve you. So it's not necessarily open to freely to anybody. What's the process for asking to be approved? Just register. Just register an account. The moment you register an account, m most probably me or somebody else from the team will contact you on Matrix. Like, hey, how are you? Is, it, is this you? Do you really want the account? Account is approved. Just to, just to make sure that we are not uh, providing a space for spammers and all the other people that we don't want. So who is working, with, working on this? So we have two full-time CPE members, which is me and Akashdeep, which are, who are working on this like, full-time. And uh, we have representatives from uh, interested federal groups. So we have one from FESCO and uh, one from QA. Uh, hopefully, we'll start meeting next week to d discuss all the stuff we did till, until this point and all the stuff that we will do until the Federal 41 deadline that we want to, pro we want to finish the investigation. And you. So we really want your help. We need you. We, because you, Federal users and Federal contributors, are the people who will be interacted with the system most. I can implement whatever I want, what is best for me, but I guarantee you, you don't like it. <laughs> uh, and I, I'm, I'm really strongly asking you to, to join us. The, what, whatever your level of uh, contributions to Fedora is, I firmly think that your contributions to the Gitforge will be helpful because people who are longer long time in Fedora won't be able to see some problems that, that, that are seen by newcomers. Because we are used to, used to doing things one way and having the feedback from you is extremely, extremely helpful. So I didn't realize that this talk was scheduled for one hour. <laughs> I, re <laughs> I realized it really, really late. So. I did I have, a, I have a, we have like a half an hour or maybe even more for questions and ask, answers. I see there is a lot of them and we don't have microphones so I will be uh, repeating them. Oh, we have one. Testing, testing. Yep. So this is not a question. Uh, who wants the mic? Uh, Given that you have quite a bit of time, I was wondering if you could uh, give us a brief tour of the uh, of the two options, just visually. So I could, but let me first. Assuming that the uh, n uh, the hotel network com uh, works along. No, it's okay. Just let me let me just make sure that. I will... It wouldn't be a flock without a live demo disaster. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. It's it's my fault that the slides ended now. So I'm all for doing. <laughs> That's what we're all about here. <laughs> Let me just undo this. Nice background. Yeah, thank you. So. be able to show you anything because my second factor authentication is somewhere <laughs> not on the stage with me <laughs> somewhere secure <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah if you if you have a if you have a uh, if you have interest in it and you want to you want to play around go and register i will i will check the registrations after my talk and i will approve you if you are if if, if you register now I have a different question. Um, on the slide of, of reviewing the user stories, uh, you have the categories of release engineering, packaging, and quality engineering, yeah. uh, which are all very much disk get packaging focused yes. things. Um, do you want at this stage user stories related to things like docs, those workflows, um, 
you know, no, no, federal no, no, legal, those kind of different yeah. things, different uses of the gift yeah. forging? No, no, not necessarily. Like, yeah, yes, we would like to get them, uh, but not, not necessarily now. We, we, are, we are externally focusing on this gift for a simple reason. We spent some time on looking into like what dogs, for example, design and design does. We we really skipped legal. That's that's true. We didn't check that check with them. But, but uh, from from what we have observed from the workflows that other teams are using, like for example, design and documentation, general project hosting is mostly what co covers it. So. Mm, I don't want to say it's hundred percent covered because I don't know, but I, I, I would say most of the most of it will be. And those things that are not covered are basically CI integration and all the duct tape that we are carrying over, carrying on with Pagure, which, for example, in GitLab there are action runners, and in uh, for Geo we have runners. So you can basically do that. You can you, you, you can abstract the workflows of, of some of the teams into the standardized project hosting tooling. But we will definitely, once we have everything from, uh, let's call it hardcore engineering teams, uh, people doing the infrastructure, people doing the packaging and doing the QA, that, then we will uh, go and ask people from other, other parts of Fedora if they have something specific that we will need to do. My battery is dying, so I will just, just leave it here. Else? There is one from Steven. So I'm curious what the timeline is in terms of getting those uh, user stories in. So I would imagine waiting towards the end probably wouldn't give a lot of time. So I'd assume that's an earlier date than the cutoff yeah. shown up there. Do we have an idea of what that is? Thank you for the question. So we, we, the gathering itself is running for about two months now. And depends where we get with the, with the QA gathering this week. I will then announce another week or two of a running gathering of the user stories, and then we'll just shut it off. And, but to answer your question differently, most of the contributions that we got in the user stories came in the first two weeks. Like a lot of people were interested in it, and a lot of people just stormed the tracker and put everything, everything in it. That's good to hear. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot for the talk. One question is about the Lucaside cache. Is it part of uh, like, uh, do we get a registry Lucaside cache kind of uh, model? Sorry. And also you say yes, so I'll, I'll continue with the second question, which is uh, how mature are the CI CD uh, on both solutions, in your opinion? And is it very important in the choice? So, uh, sorry, so I, I will first ask for, answer the second Good, question. Sorry. Uh, so it was the CI, CI CD and how important it is for us? It was the, the question. Very important, because currently we are running uh, Zool for CI. We are running different parts, uh, different things in our infrastructure to do this, basically the same stuff, which is running some arbitrary code somewhere and exporting results somewhere. So it's really important for us to have a standardized way of doing it across all projects in Fedora, because that will make our life much easier. And the first question was? For the Lucaside cache. Yeah, Lucaside cache. Thank you for that. That's an amazing question. And uh, Lucaside cache is, for those who don't know, it's basically the artifact storage that we use for building. When you are building packages, you, you uh, attach some sources to it. And those sources are stored in Lucaside cache. That's a service that Federal Infrastructure is running to store the artifacts. My understanding is that the reason we are, we are running it is because uh, Git uh, large file storage was not in a state, was, I think it was not even existent at the, at the, at the time when, when we mo moved to Git, but slowly but surely it got into a stage when it, when it might be usable for us. So we really want to give it a shot, give it, give it a try and see if we can replace it with Git alphas. Thank you. So there seemed to have been in the community a couple years ago um, an encouragement push towards using the gitlab.com instance that was given to Fedora. Um, I know the website team used that 
for their entire project, but uh, many other teams have been very slow to move over to that. So what would make the move to this different? Uh, well, <laughs> um, yeah, so there's a, there's a number of things. Uh, first of all, uh, when we had a conversation uh, original, earlier, uh, we had, as I said, really strong community sentiment that we wanted something open source. Uh, the gitlab.com thing is not open source. It's mixed with their other things, so that's one component thing. Another thing is, um, I personally, but also I've heard this feedback from a lot of other people, find it very confusing and frustrating that you must use your GitLab username there. And it's a very a big dissonance between most places where you use your Fedora username. And especially if you would try to put package builds there. So if that would be a huge, like, suddenly, like, you don't have your username or usernames don't match, there might even be conflicts. You know, I happen to have MacDM on GitLab, but what if I didn't? Somebody else had it, then that would kind of suck. Um, and then also, the auth on there is so annoying. When you try, you have to do. You have to make sure you keep going to the special like slash Fedora URL and in, in the secondary sign-on thing, and it, that's pretty frustrating. Um, we had some extensive conversations with GitLab about providing a hosted service to us, and those um, did not get to something where we had an agreement. So um, that's <laughs> where we ended up here. So, yeah. In terms, and Tomas, you can please correct me if I'm wrong here, um, but in terms of like teams that maybe already be doing their project hosting on GitLab to entice them to maybe a different Git platform, um, I believe it was Akash who had written a tool that actually migrated like project data from Pagir to GitLab. Would it be, and I suppose this is a question and an answer, but would it be within reason to expect similar convenience tooling to be provided to the project too, if anybody would like to, if it is an, if it is for Joe and we're all over on GitLab for project hosting, could we expect something like that to maybe entice yes. cohesion within the project? So um, the, 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 idea, the, the idea is to make the transition uh, as painless as possible. So we'll, we'll definitely try to um, create a tooling that will just flip the switch and we'll flip everything automatically to, to a new GitForge and then uh, the users of the GitForge and the pro project owners of different projects will be responsible for like maintaining it and maybe polishing it a little bit because we don't, maybe, the, maybe the import won't be like as seamless as we want, but we want to move everything automatically from one to another. Um, question. Uh, I understand, or correct me if I'm wrong, that the first stage of the investigation is focusing on finding what we're going to replace this git with, but is the plan that this same tool will ultimately also replace uh, Bugzilla and yes. Tagger.io, or is it possible that we'll end up with a different investigation? It's going to be one so website and not split into two yeah, like if it you, is if now. You, it can show because my battery, is di my battery, my battery died, but y yes, the, the, the core of the investigation is the, the integration of Pagure and, and Bugzilla to create this good thing that we have now. And yes, we want to replace it either with Forge or, or GitLab to everything. So we don't, we don't again fragment the, the workflows. The goal is to unify everything as much as possible. Uh, I'd have basically the same question, but more specifically with Bugzilla in particular, there's a lot of uh, like automation and superstructure built into the way we use Bugzilla right now. So thinking about, for example, on the package review process, but there's a bunch of things where like actions that people do in Bugzilla affect magical things. Uh, do you see these processes also moving into this forge or do you see these processes potentially moving somewhere else or? Eventually, ideally, I would like to see those processes abandoned. I mean, that is also an option, <laughs> but you know, we but still need package reviews. What, what, I, what I mean, no, I don't mean like abandoning package reviews. I mean, I mean abandoning package reviews in Bugzilla. Yeah. Okay. Maybe, maybe we even like, you know, th this is the discussion uh, that, that happened with the QA, that th they are going to rethink the, their processes because all of the processes that we have in different teams in Fedora are historically tied around the tooling that we had. So if we can change the tooling, maybe the processes will get 
simpler. Maybe also the the duct taping that that make that making it appear seamless and automatical will just go away, and we, we won't have to maintain it anymore. So that's ideally. Yeah, sorry. This this just goes to uh, uh, the earlier question about uh, migrations because the nice thing is 4JO actually offers a bunch of those migrations out of the box. Yep. Um, and including issues and some other metadata from existing uh, Git forges, and so that means, of course, since it's open source, it'll probably be pretty easy to um, leverage those and to do something for Pregure that's similar. Hmm. If I may, uh, is there any plan to uh, leave existing Bugzilla links alive? Uh, because there are references to Bugzilla's uh, URLs, IDs all over the place. This, this is really kind of out of the scope of the question, but I see, but I see Kevin raising his hand, so. Uh, yeah, that, that was brought up before, and uh, we're probably going to see how feasible it would be to stick a read-only version of the Fedora bugs, not the rel ones, somewhere that is accessible and just like in an OpenShift cluster that's read-only for the rest of time. But I don't know what's involved in that, so that discussion has not yet happened, but it's going to. Yeah, and th th there might be other, other options, like we might like t take the Bugzilla, generate static HTML pages from it, and just put that somewhere. So w technical options are there. A uh, quick question, like um, one thing I noticed for like a, uh, you know, fault based, like, um, well, fault just like GitHub, GitLab and so on, like um, they allow you to file issues, but unlike Bugzilla, if an issue is misfiled, which is often the case in Bugzilla if your like project is high up in like in the sorting, they are stuck and you cannot actually move issues between projects. Um, does any of the two you are considering support that? And isn't this, like I, I think this is this problem happens because we use Bugzilla for everything, right? That everything is kind of in one uh, namespace, and then then we have like components and products and stuff. So my hope is that all this complication will go away, because we would like to. What we would like to see is that instead now where you have a package and its bugs are in Bugzilla, right? In some under some component somewhere. Ideally, what I would like to see, and I hope all more federal, most federals would like to see, is to have the package repository and the issues attached to that package. So you don't you don't you don't get into this weird state where you misfile the issue. You are not you, you file it, for example, for a wrong, wrong part but of thing. You, you still have an issue, though, right? Because the package will be like the source package, and you know users will file bugs, and they they don't understand necessarily the mapping between source package name and binary package name, which can be very different. Like, I, I made the mistake of maintaining a package called crypto, and you, you can imagine where this goes. So that, that's the example. So, so uh, in particular, GitHub allows you to move an issue if you own yep. both the source and the target repository, and this is and this generally is the this what we are talking about. This is the things for 4 j for example. I'm not sure about GitLab. I didn't uh, co compare that one. That, that, was on the, that, that was done by Akash now, and I will move to it next week. But in, in 4 j you can do that really easily. Okay. Like if you, if you, for example, misfile, if we have, if we would have a, a organization called uh, Fedora Packaging, and we will have another organization called Fedora QA, and somebody will open a ticket for QA because it's wrongly, because they somehow misunderstood, people from Fedora QA can just take the ticket and move it to different organization. Uh, another thing with this, uh, I would like to, like we had an old page on the wiki that said, should I, you know, how to know when you should file a bug? And I was like, oh, that's gonna be interesting. And then it says, always file a bug, no matter what it is, you should file a bug. And um, I hope that we know by 20 years later that that was a terrible idea. <laughs> um, it, it, instead, I really want people, uh, people who experience an issue, like a problem with their system, to go to somewhere, ask Fedora first and talk about it there. And then hopefully that will stop the, like, um, the answer might be, oh, we found a resolution for it. It might be, that's an upstream problem, file that upstream. Or it might be there's a packaging issue or something that's like a release blocker kind of thing. Then you would file a bug. And I think that will cut down on the random bugs being filed against random packages mm -hmm. at least as much as we can do that. 
I was just going to mention uh, GitLab definitely lets you move issues around. Basically what it does is it closes the current I issue, creates a new issue with all of the history and everything and all the same people subscribe to it and whatever else. So um, the old issue will just have a comment at the bottom that redirects people to the to the new issue in the right project. Yeah, I, I, um, thought, so. I thought that will be the case. It's common sense, right? Like th there, there will be a m way to move the tickets between. Hello. I was wondering if you had any early thoughts on the connection between Gitforge and Conflux. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding is that guys from Conflux, you may, uh, uh, if I'm wrong, just, just correct me, uh, that you are basically using some of the enterprise features of uh, GitLab or, or GitHub. Is that right? I don't think so, no. No? Okay. We have GitHub. Right, but there's no like native complex integration with code owners. It was just a thing we thought we might need. Yeah, it would be useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um has there been any efforts by the investigation team to interact with the upstreams, whether that's GitLab or ForgeJo? I imagine that ForgeJo being another uh, community project would be enthusiastic about working with us to implement anything we might need or help us with adoption or anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, th thanks for the question. So uh, I'm in active contact with uh, the ForgeJo community. Like, I'm I'm trying to be active there because I'm using Forgeo outside of this scope, like at, at my home uh, home setup. And yeah, uh, I, I had a short talk with guys at FOSDEM and uh, in other opportunities, and they are really interested. Like they, they would really love it. But it's not just about the interest of the upstream project, right? We, we, we have to make sure that the project is covering all our requirements. But yeah, I agree with you. Forger guys are enthusiastic young people who are making new thing and they are running it in production. So, and I, I, I bet GitLab will be similar, but I'm not sure. Uh, I have a, probably a question to the entire room to maybe kind of brainstorm on. Carlos, okay, you can go, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not even the room, maybe the entire project. And so don't feel like it's just for you, Tomas. But your opening slides, were very insightful and like the decline of Pagir over time in in, uh, in in Fedora. And we're in a position where we now have to find a new Git Forge solution for the project. How are we going to make sure that we don't allow ourselves to fall into this, oh crap, we have, we're, we're not taking care of our stuff trap, you know? Again, it's, it's, a, it's a room question, it's a project question, it's food for thought, it's something we should be really mindful of. And if people have early ideas, it'd be cool to talk about it. I just had a, a follow-up to that, which was, um, are we considering what everybody else in the open source community is using, like freedesktop.org and GNOME and stuff like that? Um, I know they're all on GitLab, so is that going to be taken into account and um, as part of this decision? Mm, not, not, not necessarily. Like, we, we are not looking at how GitLab fixed your use cases or other use cases, you know, to, just, just to understand, maybe, this Git is a specific thing of its own. The, 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 way, the, the way that like, the, the use case itself, it's kind of complicated. And I try to look at, for example, what GNOME does with, with their GitLab uh, deployment, and I'm not sure that's something, we, the, the deployment itself and the way they do it is not something we want to do. And, I'm open to go and see uh, how other projects implemented the so solutions they use once council has chosen the solution we will implement. Yeah, uh, to be clear, that's not Tom this is not Tomasha's problem, the things you're talking about, right? right. So, so the, this investigation that the uh, ARC team is doing is on the requirements and making a recommendation like which, which can you know, the infrastructure team reasonably uh, support which will fit our needs 
um, you know, is there a recommendation? Are they both fine? Whatever, mm -hmm. from a technical point of view, and then the council will consider those things. We have considered some of them already um, when we make a final decision. Uh, yeah, I was just going to ask that that same thing. What are the next steps after the evaluation is done? Uh, I believe I saw some kind of like decision making framework and stakeholders and things like that. So Aoife maybe could talk to that. <laughs> this is a very large decision that impacts the entire project and it is extremely hard to figure out who the decision makers should be. Um, yeah, council obviously will ultimately make a decision based on the investigation, but we're not the only ones with a say. And I even hate saying that because it feels like I'm boxing out a lot of the other aspects of the project too. But at what point do we make a very, like, at what point does it become too big of a meeting to make any sense to anyone, you know? So that's, that's kind of what we're trying to address for the next phase. We have a couple of weeks, we have about six weeks before the guys have finished their, uh, their investigation and by that time I would like us to have the clear decision makers. My preference is like do it like a go no go like Fesco does for Linux. You know, you, you identify those clear decision makers and you get a vote but there is a, there is a decision policy in the Fedora project as well so we may have to look into an amalgamation of the two of them. It's, it's a complex topic, it really is. And my hat goes off to the, the team who are doing the investigation. And genuinely, thank you to those who are getting plugged in and helping provide those user stories. It's a huge topic, it's a huge undertaking. Help is needed and wanted. Uh, uh, one thing that came to mind, because you were mentioning GNOME and Free Desktop, uh, both of those instances are often infrastructure and mm, moderation issues, I would say, due to abuse. Uh, and whatever solution we end up picking, that's probably something we have to consider as part of the requirements in, because uh, like if somebody starts attempting to DOS it, how is easy to take it down? How is easy to use it to store unseen yeah. content? Like, you get what I mean, like yeah. this kind of stuff. So more of a comment than a question, I guess. Yeah, um, but you, 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 you're correct. And uh, some of the, there is some tooling for moderation in both of those solutions. We didn't look into it that, that much yet because the, the technicalities of, of, of all the processes are things that are, we are c covering now. And once we get all the technical stuff covered, we will look into like moderation and, and all the other things that are kind of um, added value that are not necessarily part of the project hosting, uh, this Git hosting kind of thing. Well, I was thinking more in terms of scaling Oh. If, every, if every request, like, I don't know, spawns up a worker, consumes a million typos, so, that's the problem. About, about, about scaling, there is, a nice, there is a nice blog post from the Codeberg people, and from, which is the Codeberg is the organization that's deploying for Geo in uh, production. And they have a really nice blog post about it, like how does it scale, what, 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 are, what, what are the difficulties they are leading, what, what are the problems, what are, what are the physical limits of it because every software project has a physical limit. I am currently looking for something like that about GitLab. I, I haven't found uh, one yet, but I didn't search that, that much. I, I, I presume that GNOME might have produced something like that. And it might have produced some document about what, is it, what did it take. So, so Aoife asked a question earlier to the room and I have one possible answer. And keep in mind, I'm just one, one person. So. Everyone has their own voice in this, but um, I think if we, to avoid this happening again, where we're kind of holding so onto something for a long period of time and not having it move forward, it might be if you value something, a service or an application, be, be ready to jump in and be a part of that service or that application. Being a user is awesome, reporting bugs is great, helping fix something or push a release or things like that is also awesome and helpful. I know a lot of people do those things, so it's not a negative statement that I'm trying to say, but just one of those things, it can be easy, myself included, to use something, and then when it's going away, be like, no, 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 I need that. But the reality is a lot of times it's, I want that, but I also didn't get involved with that. And I may, it could have been helpful if I did. Um, the other thing is maybe add in that 
if we look at the usage statistics over time too, we can kind of head this off a bit. We might be able to say, okay, this is getting a lot of hits, this is not, or this is being utilized often in the community. This is not so much. So let's have a conversation about the one that is not. So not just sunset it, but talk about it, see if there is a reason to keep it going or to change it or do something like that. So I add, before it's too late, you're getting yeah. Yes. For reference, uh, before it's too late for the get involved point, like uh, you know, I think this this is what happened with Pagger. I don't want to go too much into like nostalgia history, even though I'm really tempted to. Um, <laughs> there's you know, uh, it would have been awesome if Red Hat had spun Pagger off as a little startup company and uh, Pingu would have gone off and run with that and gotten some funding, but that didn't happen. And then you know. Uh, Several years later, that gigantic backlog of bugs is there. Feature parity is not even close. There's not, you know, uh, the integrations and APIs. There, you know, there's uh, ideas for it, but it's just not there. And you know, now it's now it's way too late. So this was not a call for more people to um, come to Pagger and start helping because uh, uh, that's not helpful anymore. So I was wondering, uh, right now we've got you know our separate, our Diskit instance of Pagger and then Pagger IO is general Git for toasting. Um, is that something that we're wanting to continue, like se a separate instance for Diskit or maybe unify it and just have namespaces? Uh, I ideally have just namespaces, having, <laughs> having one instance which is namespaced through RPMs, whatever it is. It's, it's probably the best approach, not to confuse people, not to fragment anything, just to have a one Excellent. point of entry. Uh, so while I'm walking, I, I wanted to make a comment that there was this initiative to have, uh, I mean, the name was probably different, uh, web uh, page transparency so that at the bottom of the page you would have a, a link to, that would point you to the place where the sources for this mm -hmm. uh, service are. And I think that uh, Forjo is nice in this regard that because it already shows the version at the bottom, which is a first a good step and we should probably try to make this uh, I mean like allow users to contribute to to the website stuff more easily by by mm. immediately linking where to go My, I'm just gonna build on what Steve said because you gave me a good idea and it reminded me of um, a really really good point made in the Fesco panel earlier of where there's a danger of younger um, engineers forgetting how to code because AI is doing it all. But you know, this is if we box clever with this kind of monumental change in the project, we're kind of at this cusp where we can make sure that people are plugged into how the diskit stuff works. You know, we can be transparent in overhauling it. Maybe there's mentorship opportunities through this. Uh, shameless plug for the strategy lean coffee session in a half an hour where we are going to be talking about collaboration tooling and Diskit as part of that and we want to grow our contributors and maybe we're helping each other all, to, all the time and we just need to be a bit more intentional and clearer with it and pull those little parallels together so that, that's, it was a good idea Steve and it just it, like like that it sparked like oh wait but this also fits over here so let's let's talk about it more. Uh, Brendan you had a question. It's more of a comment following up on what Matthew said. Right now, we have multiple open source Git forges out there, and it doesn't seem like there's enough open source energy to support lots and lots of them. So if we do go down the Forgeo path, that's kind of like a uniting action, and I think that's good for open source generally. was to continue the, the Carl comment on multi-tenancy and forge of forge, basically. Is it a criteria you're looking at? Let's imagine there's another project in, in the Red Hat community that would like to use Forgeo or GitLab as well. Is this something that could be done in terms of a linking instance, something like that? Is it, is it a criteria you're looking at or not at all? No, not really. <coughs> We're not really looking into, in, into it now. But once we get the decision done, because I, I do think that whatever council decides, both of the solutions seems to be mature enough that implementing anything should not be that problematic as it as it's now with Pagure. 
because because of the feature parity and, and where we are like the, the tech debt is so big compared to the new things like for geo or, or gitlab that, that doing such stuff in gitlab or for geo might be much easier and, and simpler for us so it seems we have no more questions right now and we make it through the, almost the whole hour. <laughs> Thank you very much for all, all of the inputs. It was amazing.